Dear students, in this module, we are going to talk about bottom-up proteomics in detail. Just to give you a background, you would know that there are two types of proteomics approaches that are typically employed. The first one is bottom-up proteomics that has been there for a long time. However, there is a newer approach called top-down proteomics that is also available for proteomics analysis now. So to begin with, bottom-up proteomics protocol. The first thing that you have to do when you do bottom-up proteomics is that you take the sample which contains multiple proteins and you separate them using a gel. So once you have separated the proteins on a gel, that you can, then you can take a protein, treat it with an enzyme which will cleave it at specific sites and you will have several peptides resulting from the process. For instance, you can use trypsin to treat the proteins and the trypsin will, enzyme will cut all the proteins that you have at lysine residue. Lysine in short has an acronym of K if you look at the amino acid table. So once you have obtained the peptides from the proteins then you can proceed with onward analysis. Okay, you must remember here that you will have several peptides that, that are formed as a result of this cleavage process. If an enzyme cuts all the sites within the protein, then you will have a lot of peptides. However, it is possible that the enzyme fails to cut at every specific site and therefore you may end up with a lesser number of peptides resulting from the digestion process. For instance, if you have three lysines in a protein and you, you treat it with trypsin, then it is a possibility, there is a possibility that trypsin will cut at all three or just two or only one site where lysine exists. So you must keep this in mind when you analyze your proteins. So once you have obtained the peptides, from the enzymatic digestion, you send them into the mass spectrometer. So once you inject these peptides into the mass spectrometer, they are deflected within the magnetic field and you can obtain their molecular weight or mass. This is the first MS or simply MS1. MS1 would give you the molecular weight of these peptides. So next, if you have these molecular weights, then you can refer to the protein sequence databases. You can get a protein from those databases. You can cleave it at these at the same sites on which the enzyme of your choice cut in your experiment. And then you can compare the peptides from the MS1 versus the peptides from the in silico digestion that you just performed. What if you want to do another kind of cleavage? So in that case, you can treat the peptides with some other enzyme. The new enzyme, or let's say enzyme number 2, will cut at those sites which are specific to that enzyme. So in this way, you can cut a peptide at multiple amino acids. Of course, once you have cut the peptide at the newer site, then you can measure its molecular weight as well and this can be an MS2 or an MS3 and so on and so forth. You can then proceed as you did with MS1 into the protein sequence databases and measure the peptides that are formed from the in silico digestion of those proteins from the database. This process needs to be repeated until you have found the protein that was there in the sample by comparing the peptides from the sample with the peptides from the database. So once you have a good comparison, then you can be sure that the protein in question has been searched and identified from the protein sequence database. Let's take a look at an example. So here you have a protein sequence which contains two lysines. So if you treat this protein with trypsin, then what trypsin will do is it will cleave here and here. So 
the possibilities that you can have is you have the protein and lysine or you can have this part of the protein and lysine or you can have this part of the protein and lysine and so on and so forth. So there are so many possibilities that exist for cutting a protein at the specific site. So once you have obtained all the possible peptides, then you can search them in the protein database. So the matching peptides will tell you which protein they came from. Of course, these sequence databases can be SwissProt or UniProt or any other protein sequence database of your choice. So in conclusion, bottom-up proteomics looks at the enzymatic digestion products, that is the peptides, and tries to search it from the protein sequence databases. The peptides that result from this match are actually going to help you identify which pro precursor protein was there in the sample.